them a long time to figure that out in some court action on top of it. In fact, who is at Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty? The best hope for democratic regime change in Iran. That's who's there. And my mission's not over with the delisting. My mission will continue then. I read something on the internet the other day. The French government acknowledged the resistance in Syria. Awesome. I think it's about time the French government and my own government, the United States of America, recognizes the NCRI as the main opposition group against the Mullah's regime. He gave the Mullah regime legitimacy in pulling out and closing Camp Ashraf to allow the Iraqis to pilfer, vandalize, and loot that place. The residents peaceably complied with every request. And what did they get in return? Yet Martin Kobler watches knowingly without so much as speaking up as the agreements he helped make to do the relocation are disregarded by the Iraqis. And the resident, residents are systematically stripped of their property, but never their dignity. The Mullah's regime, even with your help, Mr. Kobler, will never break the spirit of the resistance. And it's obvious the Mullahs believe Camp Ashraf will be no more. Oh, how wrong they are. I know the residents of Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty. I have had boots on the ground there. And it took me years to understand. Camp Ashraf is not a place. It's a belief and a spirit within all freedom-loving people. And you can't extinguish the flame of hope merely by bulldozing a place to the ground and imprisoning its inhabitants. Camp Ashraf will live on regardless of the destruction, humiliation, and terror opposed on the residents. But the mullahs don't understand and don't know their history. Let me take you all back to 2003, when we, and I was part of it, consolidated and disarmed the Mujahideen Aid Kalk and their National Liberation Army. As the tanks and the armored vehicles and the artillery pieces and the small arms were being taken away, because as that last armored vehicle was coming out of Ashraf, my driver, a young man from Maine, scrambled up to the antenna and pulled down and took the last banner on the last armored vehicle to leave Camp Ashraf of the National Liberation Army. And that flag does not belong with me. That flag belongs in a free and democratic Iran, and I'm going to give it where it belongs to Madame Rajavi so that she can take it back to Tehran. What has been allowed to happen to the residents of Ashraf and Liberty violates sacred honor, the rights of humanity, the regard of the military, 
the national character not only of America but of the entire world. Just as the U.S. must honor those agreements, so must the United Nations. To Ambassador Kobler, I state, Blessing every inhumane act by the Maliki government is wrong. Presenting liberty as a humane environment while covering up the true conditions is despicable. Sitting idle while agreements are ignored is unforgivable. The solution, the long-term solution for the future. Liberty must be declared a refugee camp by the United Nations. We need, as stated, to recognize the MEK as a vile alternative. And let me make one thing clear, and I've said it before, and I've realized it to be true. The MEK in Mrs. Rajavi is not after power in Iran. They in Mrs. Rajavi are after democracy in Iran. Madam Rajavi distinguished guests and friends of freedom. In the last couple of months, we have won a great victory. The MEK has been removed from the U.S. terrorist list. With this delisting, the regime in Iran has been put on notice, and it is one step closer to falling. Freedom is on our doorsteps. Our combined effort now is to ensure the U.S. and the U.N. keep the pressure on Iraq to protect the people in Liberty and Ashraf. They must have the ability to sell their property, to fund their lives as they exist in Iraq until they can be moved or relocated to other countries. Iraq and the U.N. must recognize Liberty as a refugee camp, not a prison,